Welcome back. Next, we're gonna take a look at saving and loading other file formats. So we're gonna look at text, CSV, and JSON. Um, so first of all, text, we commonly use this when we have logs. So we'll often write to our log files. Um, so we need to know how to do that. So a common way to do it is to open a handle to that file. So you'll see here, I'm using this command hopen. open. Um, so that simply allows me to open a handle to a file. So if I check my current directory before, you see this is all I have there. And if I run this hitch open command and then pass it a file path, which is just the name of the, the file and .txt, you'll see I get um, an integer saved down as the my file handle. Um, but also it's done something here. So if I refresh this, you'll see it's also created that text file and it's currently empty. Um, I haven't put anything in it. Um, but yeah, just noting if you open a handle to a file that doesn't exist, it's gonna create it for you. And then if you run key on that, that's just showing it's currently saved in our current directory. Now that we've done that um, file handle open, we're able to use that same handle. So this 1027 integer number in order to write to the file. So I can simply pass any um, text in there with string quotes around it. And that's going to send to the file. So if I run both of these, um, two different strings here, writing some text and on the same line, and I come back to my text file, you'll see I now have that inputted into the text file and it's all come in on the one line. So even though I had the handles um, ran them separately, um, it still puts them all on the one line. So if you want to um, send a comment on a new line, um, you'd need to send it with a negative file handle and that's gonna basically add a carriage return to the end. So if I run this in comparison to the one before, you see I get the minus returned out here. Um, so that's what's known as an asynchronous message. And um, when we're talking about file handles, you see um, the first one comes in on the same line and that's because I um, ha didn't have a carriage return at the end of this. But then um, on my second one here, you'll see that's now on the next line because I added a carriage return here with this negative file handle, okay? Um, so you don't need to worry too much about hopen yet. Um, that comes into play when we start looking at things like IPC, so inter-process communication. Um, but for now, um, in the context of files and writing to files, um, it will allow us to create a file and then write some data to it when we're talking about text files. And you might see this used with logging most commonly. Um, so there's an exercise here, um, and it's really gonna go back to what we learned in our execution control module. So you may remember from that, um, we um, had some exercises around using protected evaluation um, and then doing some logging as part of that. So if this is seeming a bit new and unusual to you, I would definitely recommend you head back to that module and um, the one on execution control um, and even taking a quick look at the scripting and logging module as well if you hadn't yet. And um, those would both help you do this question and exercise um, and should make this a lot easier for you. Um, and then once you're happy with that, um, we can move on and learn how to load data in from text files. Um, so it's a lot simpler. We just say read zero and then pass the file path. Um, so we don't need to worry about um, opening any handles. So we're reading this in and you'll see every line in the text file comes in as a separate string. So I've got two strings here. Um, and then I can do um, any manipulation I want to. So remember back to our string manipulation module, we learned we had this VS function, which stands for vector from scalar. And I can do things like um, create um, substrings from a wider string. So for example, I'm gonna pass it a space here. And this is saying everywhere I have a space, I wanna create that, um, I wanna make that a new string. And then I'm applying the each boat operator. So again, if you're not familiar with this, you can check out the iterators module for more detail on each both. Um, so when I run this, it's saying, um, I'm gonna split all of these, anywhere there's a space is gonna become a new string. And then the reason I'm putting each both here is so that I can do it over this first one here and then again here. Okay, and um, this is just a quick example of a kind of string manipulation you could use, um, but you could, it's obviously not limited to this. Um, it's just a quick intro and definitely there's a lot more string manipulation techniques shown in our string manipulation module. Um, and you can play around with applying those on any text files you might be working with. Okay, so that's our text files. Um, I'll see you in the next video when we look at CSV files.